Hello, I'm Charles Johns, Superintendent of West Chicago Elementary District 33. This video provides an update on the proposals for professional learning teams and collaboration time, as well as schedule changes to improve the operation of the district. The discussions about professional learning teams, often referred to as PLTs, began almost two years ago in teacher negotiations. During negotiations, the teachers union and the school board agreed to a study to find better and more appropriate PLT time. This time would come outside of student contact time. Currently, when teachers meet to review student data, the district provides substitute teachers. This results in time away from students and additional preparation requirements for the teachers. The study examined late arrival and early dismissal options that are found in some of our other accompanying districts. With these options, students would either have a late start to their day or depart early. This would create time for teachers to hold the PLT meetings. Additionally, this committee was used to engage the community on key decisions in the district. The PLT project only pertained to the elementary schools. Professional learning teams, also called course-alike teams or grade-level teams, are very important in modern public schools. Professional learning teams review student performance data to improve instruction, analyze student performance to determine interventions and enhancements, share best practices and discoveries that teachers might make, problem-solve curricular or student-related issues, and support in general ways the implementation of the curriculum instruction as a team. Aside from reducing the time that teachers are away from their students, there are numerous advantages to the use of professional learning teams. Research has shown that it reduces isolation of teachers, creates a greater commitment to the strategic plan and school vision, creates collective responsibility for student success, allows teachers to develop new knowledge and skills, creates greater satisfaction, higher morale, and lower rates of absenteeism, and causes a greater commitment to making significant and lasting changes for the systemic change. This slide is an example of the substitute schedule that is currently used. Under our current model, we use this type of schedule to provide the professional learning team time. We currently call these data review meetings. As you can see, in a given month, there is a lot of time that students are being taught by someone other than their classroom teacher. The committee began its work with the following beliefs about the benefits and outcomes of PLT time. Having scheduled PLT time will improve grade level team performance. Subs are currently covering classrooms to release teachers for data review meetings, causing a loss of instructional time. Reducing loss of instructional time will improve student performance. In order to evaluate the options, the committee set the following considerations. The goal was to find a solution that maximizes as many of these objectives as possible. Those solutions cannot reduce instructional time, replace teacher plan time, it must be consistent with instructional time, must not cause increased absenteeism, it should have minimal impact on the schedules of other employees and families, it must be cost effective, perceived as having a positive impact by teachers, allows current programs to continue, such as breakfast and ex extracurricular programs, and have minimal impact on families. At first, the committee reviewed just the late arrival and early dismissal options. We learned from the community that child care needs for our families would make these solutions very difficult. This was compounded when we learned that area partners would not be able to accommodate the number of elementary students that we have, which is over 2,700 students. In fact, they could only serve a very small fraction of these students. This led us to brainstorm for other options. We looked at options three and four. Option three is adding an additional specials class in a manner similar to PE, music, and art. This would give classroom teachers more PLT time and a block of time each week. Additionally, we looked at replacing the substitute teachers with full-time teachers who would deliver their own curriculum and not cause the amount of preparation work for the classroom teachers that our current model causes. In the end, the committee selection was option three, with a bit of a twist. Both options three and four meant that the classroom teachers would still be away from their students. So instead of losing that time, the instructional day was expanded by 25 minutes to cover the time for the new special class. So here's an example of what option three does to the student instructional day and the teacher work day. Again, this is when we expand the student day within the existing teacher work day by adding an additional special. So on any typical day or teacher day, is 360 minutes. Inside of that day is the student instructional day, 
which is currently 320 minutes. Teachers have some time at the beginning of the day, which is typically not scheduled. And then there's time at the end of the day that's also typically not scheduled. It's often used for supervision of students coming on and off the buses, or can be used for teacher meetings, staff meetings, and the like. Under the new model, the teacher workday is the same. It's still 360 minutes. What we'll see, however, is that the student instructional day expands. And in this case, it's going to expand to 345 minutes. Just for some comparison sake, our current instructional day of 320 minutes is one of the lowest in the DuPage County area. However, when we add the additional 25 minutes to move to 345, that puts us in about the middle of the districts in our county. So this allows us to move away from a model that looks like this to one that looks like this. We will still need some substitutes to cover for pupil personnel service meetings with classroom teachers and for student inclusion meeting purposes, but it will be a radically lower amount of time than in the current model. This translates into up to 9 to 18 additional hours a year that a classroom teacher is able to spend with his or her students. The side-by-side -side comparison is quite compelling. While each building's schedule will be unique and reflect the needs of the building, they will all be fairly similar to this sample. As you can see, at this school, there is one day a week set aside for PLT time and an additional special is rotated into the student's schedule. There will be additional costs associated with this model. It will require six additional teachers at approximately $70,000 apiece, totaling about $420,000. Curriculum and planning costs will be an additional $30,000, bringing the total cost of this model change to about $450,000. In the end, we will know that we made the right decision when there's no loss of instructional time, there's increased time for data review and collaboration, families are impacted positively, and there are more positive outcomes than negative. As the PLT time change was being made, it made sense to make other needed schedule changes as well. The first of these is the busing changes. As you are aware, we have struggled for quite some time with ensuring that elementary students are brought home on a timely and consistent manner. The cause of this problem is that the buses are used for a middle school route and often cannot get to the elementary schools on time to meet the schedule. The bus company made us aware that expanding the time between the two routes could solve this problem except of course for days when there are unforeseen issues such as weather and traffic conditions. The simple change can eliminate the delays that we saw this year that topped over an hour on some occasions. Here's how it worked. Currently, middle school goes from 7.40 to 2.25, followed by the elementary from 8.25 to 2.45. There's only 20 minutes between the two routes. By changing the start times, we were able to slide the schedules to create a 45 minute window between running the middle school route and the elementary routes. This gives us the full 45 minutes that we need to conduct a turnaround time for the buses to pick up students at the elementary schools. Since at least 2015, there have been numerous concerns brought forward about the early morning start time at our middle school. Numerous people have reflected on the recent research that points out that students need additional sleep to be effective in school and for their overall well-being. Currently, the start time is 7.40 at the middle school and even earlier for those who take zero-hour foreign language classes. We've been asked to moderate the start time. In the schedule changes, we were able to slightly moderate the early start by 15 minutes. It is not a lot, but it is an improvement for those trying to get an adolescent out of bed or for those students in the zero hour program. Making broader changes would be difficult at this time. This chart highlights the impact of the schedule. It points out when work days begin, when the instructional time begins, the amount of instructional minutes, when the instructional day ends, the work day ends, and bus departure. This change will move us again, as I said earlier, from being one of the districts with the fewest amount of instructional minutes a day into about the middle of the county. This slide reiterates the details of the impact to the middle school schedule. You'll note that aside from the start and end times, everything else stays consistent. 
At this point, we've only had con conversations about the impact of early childhood programming. However, it is possible to increase teacher preparation time while maintaining the same amount of contact time and instructional time for students. Again, this is something that's under review and no change is being made at this point. We'll let you know if there is some change. As a district, our next steps is to continue the conversation at the board level. Further discussion will take place in January with a possible adoption in February. Additionally, the administration will work with eTalk to make sure that we maximize employee satisfaction, communicate with staff and families, and determining next steps in curriculum planning and hiring. At this point, I want to make sure that I thank the members of the PLT meeting study team. Uh, they put in a lot of work over about 18 months of time and did some difficult deliberations. I also want to thank you for taking the time to learn more about this important opportunity for our district.